We are asked to use the binomial expansion to show that the square root of 1 plus 4x over 1 minus x is approximately 1 plus 5 over 2x minus 5 over 8x squared for 6 marks. Okay, so the first rule that I'm going to use to solve this is I'm going to say that if you have the square root of a over b, this equals the square root of a b to the minus 1, okay, which equals a to the 0 0.5 times b to the minus 0 0.5, all right? So let's, uh, let's apply that. So we're going to say the square root of 1 plus 4x over 1 minus x. So in this case, we're going to let our a be 1 plus uh, that broke across a b 1 plus 4x and our b be 1 minus x like this okay so this equals the square root of 1 plus 4x times 1 minus x to the minus 1 which equals 1 plus 4x to the half times 1 minus x to the minus a half like that okay now, what we have here is we have an expression of the form 1 plus x all to the n, where n is a um, rational number, okay? So it's a fraction, all right? So how, you know, do, how do you go about expanding this? Well, if you have 1 plus x all to the n, this equal, oh, sorry, given that n is a rational number, function like that, okay, I don't really know how to draw that properly, but uh, this equals 1 plus nx, okay, plus n, n minus 1 over 1 times 2 x squared, and so on, okay. Now, this is a formula which is in your formula book, all right, so you're not expected to remember this off by heart. Now, the reason I'm stopping at x squared is because, notice, the highest term for our approximation is x squared, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this formula and apply it first to 1 plus 4x or to 0 0.5 and then 1 minus x to the minus 0 0.5. So what I'm going to say is uh, 1 plus 4x to the power of 0 0.5 equals 1 plus, now here we know our n is 0 0.5, okay? So this is going to be 0 0.5 times our x term, so times 4x, plus, again, 0 0.5 times minus 0 0.5, because n minus 1, all over 2, times, and then 4x all squared is going to be 16x squared, like that, okay? I'm just going to simplify it out a bit. So we're going to have um, 1... So 0 0.5 times 4x is 2x, so 1 plus 2x plus 0 0.5 times minus 0 0.5 is minus 0 0.25, okay? Minus 0 0.25 over 2 is minus 0 0.125, and then minus 0 0.125 times 16 is the same as 16 divided by minus 8, which is minus 2. So it's actually going to be minus 2x squared, okay? Now let's apply the same thing for 1 minus x. So 1 minus x to the power of the minus 0 0.5 in this case equals, again, 1. Now we need to do minus 0 0.5 times minus x. So that's going to get us positive 0 0.5x, all right, like that. And then it's going to be plus minus 0 0.5 times minus 1.5 all over 2 times, and then minus x squared is just going to be x squared, okay? Simplifying this gets us uh, 1 plus 0 0.5x plus minus 0 0.5 times 1.5, so that's just going to be 0 0.5 times 1.5, which is 0 0.75. 0 0.75 divided by 2 is 0. Uh, 375x squared, so 0.375x squared, okay? Now, what we need to do is we just need to expand the bracket. So what we need to say is like 1 plus 4x to the 0 0.5 times 
1 minus x to the minus 0 0.5 equals, and then just in brackets, 1 plus 2x minus 2x squared times 1 plus 0 0.5x plus 0.375x squared, like this. Okay. Now what we need to do is expand the uh, brackets. Okay. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to expand up until the x squared term, because if we go back to our answer, okay, our answer had an x squared term in it. So we're going to start 1 times 1, okay, is 1. So this is going to equal 1, and then 1 times 0.5x is 0.5x, so plus 0.5x. 1 times 0.375x squared is plus 0.375x squared. And now we're just going to repeat this. So we've got 2x times 1, which is 2x. So I'm going to write them under here just to keep the x's and the x squares together. And then 2x times 0.5x squared is going to be 2 times 0.5, so 1, 1x squared, so plus x squared. And then the final step is to do minus 2x squared, uh, I need to fix that probably, minus 2x squared times 1, which is going to be minus 2x squared. Okay. What we can do now is we can add all of these. So what we will end up with is 1 plus 2.5x and then 0 0.375 plus 1 is 1.375 minus 2. So if I just check on my calculator, 1.375 minus 2 is minus 0 0.625. So minus 6... 6 minus 0 0.625, sorry, x squared, okay? Now, look in our question, we've been given it as a fraction. So, as good practice, we are going to convert our answer into a fraction, okay? So we're gonna say, therefore, the square root of one plus four x all over one minus x is approximately 1 plus, and then 2.5 is the same as 5 over 2, x. And then minus 0 0.625 is the same as minus 5 over 8, so minus 5 over 8, x squared, as required. Okay? So this question is worth 6 marks, okay? Your first mark comes from converting the square root of 1 plus 4x over 1 minus x into this form here, okay? So that gets you your first mark. Your next three marks come from correctly expanding and uh, getting the answers for 1 plus 4x to the 0 0.5 and 1 minus x to the minus 0 0.5, okay? So you get one mark if you got either correct, but if you got both correct, you get three marks. So the fact that we've gotten this one right and this one right means we get our third mark, okay? Your fifth mark comes from getting uh, this sum here, okay? So writing that down, so expanding only the correct and necessary terms gets you your fifth mark, and then your sixth mark comes from getting the correct final answer as required. Part B is asking us to give a reason why the student shouldn't use x equals a half, okay? When looking at what values you can't use, you need to look at the validity of the expansion, okay? And as a general rule, an expansion in the form p plus qx all to the n is valid when the modulus of qx over p is less than 1, like that, okay? Rearranging this, we get qx is less than p, and therefore x is less than p, uh, modulus of p, sorry, over the modulus of q, like that, all right? So, what we're going to do is we're going to find the validity for both 1 plus 4x and 1 minus x, and whichever one is uh, smaller, that's the one we're going to use, okay? So, Let's take a look. So, for 1 plus 4x, okay, our p is 1, right, and our q is 4, okay? So, therefore, it is valid when the modulus of x is less than 1 over 4, 
all right? If we take 1 minus x, it is valid for, if we just apply the same thing, when the modulus of x, because uh, q is minus 1, so the modulus of q is 1 and p is 1, so 1 over 1 is going to be 1, okay? As we can see here, 1 over 4 is smaller than 1, so the 1 over 4 is what we're going to use for our argument. All right. So what we need to do is we need to say something along the lines of uh, expansion is valid when the modulus of x is less than 1 over 4. Since x equals a half is greater than 1 over 4, which it is, okay, we shouldn't use x equals a half. So this question is worth one mark and the one mark just comes from completing your argument as such. Part C is asking us to substitute x equals 1 over 11 into um, our approximation for the square root of 1 plus 4x over 1 minus x to obtain an approximation to root 6. We are told to give our answer as a fraction in its simplest form. So this question actually is pretty straightforward. All we need to do is plug in x for 1 over 11 into our expansion here and here, as well as substituting our value of x equals an integer 11 into each of our x terms here. And all we need to do is just solve it and rearrange to get root 6. All right, so let's go on to that. We're going to say at x equals 1 over 11, the square root of 1 plus 4x over 1 minus x equals the square root of 1 plus 4 over 11. So if I put that into my calculator, okay, 1 plus 4 over 11 is 15 over 11, like this, all over 1 minus 1 over 11, which is 10 over 11, like that. Simplifying this, we have over 11 on both sides. So this just equals the square root of 15 over 10. And 15 over 10 simplifies to 3 over 2. So this equals the square root of 3 over 2. Now, we can say again, at x equals 1 over 11, okay, just substituting it into our uh, approximation, we have 1 plus 5 over 2x minus 5 over 8x squared equals... 1 plus, now 5 over 2 times 1 over 11 is 5 over 22, okay, minus, and then 5 over 8 times 1 over 11 squared gets us 5 over 9, 6, 8, okay? What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to sum these up on my calculator just to get a final expression, which is 1,183 over 968. So therefore, what we can write now is root 3 over 2, sorry, root 3 over root 2 equals 1183 over 968. If we look, root 6 equals root 3 times 2, which is root 3 times root 2, okay? And we already have root 3 over root 2. So to get from root 3 over root 2 to just root 3, we need to do root 3 over root 2 times um, root 2 gets us just root 3, okay? And then to get from root 3 to root 6, we need to do root 3 times root 2 equals root 6 like that. So what we've done is we've multiplied root 3, so in conclusion actually, I'm just going to write it like this, okay, root 3 over root 2 times root 2 times root 2 gets us our root 6. Root 2 times root 2 is the same as 2, so therefore what we can say is root 3 over root 2 times 2 equals root 6, all right? And therefore, root 6 equals 1183 over 968 times 2, okay? And what this equals is 1183 over 484, all right? So what we can say in conclusion, therefore, root 6 equals 1183 over 484. 
So this question is worth three marks. Your first mark comes from, uh, you know, actually doing the substitution. x equals 1 over 11 into both the square root of 1 plus 4x over 1 minus x and 1 plus 5 over 2x minus 5 over 8x squared. So you need both of these two things to get your first mark. Your second mark comes from setting them equal to each other. And your third mark comes from doing the necessary work to get your final answer.